Hi YouTube, this is one of a series of videos looking at the documentary A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, produced by Bart Sabrell. You will hear me mention him quite a lot. Check out my channel for other videos in the series, or for the box set where you can watch them all in one feature length video. Part 4 No Blast Crater In this section, we take a closer look at the lunar surface and how it was affected by the landing. As always, I'll address each claim after the clip. Someone apparently forgot to create a burn crater underneath the lunar module's 10,000-pound thrust engine, despite the fact that during ground tests there was a real concern for the vehicle falling into the hole the engine created as it descended. Here is a depiction based on the latest specifications and scientific data. In these enlargements, it looks as though the lunar module was simply placed there. Not even one speck of moon dust on the landing pod. As a result, all subsequent flights had to have the same discrepancy, which was explained away by the effect of no atmosphere. This blast crater claim is a hoaxer favourite, and here as usual it is offered without any quantifiable justification. The lunar module descent engine, known as the Descent Propulsion System, or DPS, could produce 10,000 pounds per foot of thrust. This was throttleable down to about 1,000 pounds. Managing the descent and hovering over the lunar surface wasn't this engine's only task. The DPS also had to perform orbital manoeuvres at the start of the descent when the lunar module was fully laden with fuel, and it had to be able to put the lunar module back into lunar orbit in an abort situation. We know that just prior to landing, the DPS was producing 2,600 pounds of thrust. To put this into context, we can compare with the thrust output of some other engines. A Harrier jump jet, for instance, produces more than eight times the thrust of the DPS at landing, and we do not expect to or see it leaving burn marks or craters. It will, however, blow up some dust, as did the lunar module. We can see it in the landing film, and hear Aldrin refer to it as he calls out an altitude of 40 feet. 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down, straight shadow. Four forward, four forward, drifting to the right a little. 30, down and a half. 30 seconds. Forward, just. Good. Okay. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Hose control, both auto, descent engine command override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Closer inspection of the photos taken of Eagle's engine bell show further evidence of the engine's thrust with obvious radial scoring on the ground beneath. This claim is a distortion of the truth. In 1955, astrophysicist and NASA consultant Thomas Gold hypothesised that the moon was covered by a layer of fine rock dust several feet thick, stemming from, quote, the ceaseless bombardment of its surface by solar system debris, unquote. This led to the dust being jokingly referred to as gold dust, and this hypothesis was ridiculed by some other scientists. Gold initially suggested that spacecraft and astronauts would sink into the dust, but upon later analysis of impact craters and electrostatic fields, he determined that the astronauts' boots would sink only 3 centimetres into the Moon's surface, a prediction which ultimately turned out to be true. Debate and fears over this remained until NASA completed five successful robotic landings of the unmanned Surveyor spacecraft. I can't be certain of the source of this image, which Sibrel tells us is based on the latest specifications and scientific data. But I do know it is included in this children's book from 1963. If you find any of Sibrel's arguments compelling, you should be asking yourself why fibs like this are necessary. As we have seen, dust was blasted away by the lunar module descent engine. But there is no atmosphere on the moon, so no way for this dust to billow in clouds and then settle. It would simply be blasted away following a ballistic trajectory. Neil Armstrong described this in a 2001 interview. 
He said, I was absolutely dumbfounded when I shut the rocket engine off and the particles that were going out radially from the bottom of the engine fell all the way out over the horizon. And when I shut the engine off, they just raced out over the horizon and instantaneously disappeared. You know, just like it had been shut off for a week. That was remarkable. I'd never seen that. I'd never seen anything like that. And logic says, yes, that's the way it ought to be there. But I hadn't thought about it, and I was surprised. Despite the claim to the contrary, there are examples from later flights of lunar dust on the landing pads. Dust isn't the only thing that Mr. Sobrell feels is missing from the Apollo photographs. In part 5, we address his claims over the lack of stars. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.